at a prison in Northern California. There's a 12-step recovery group called Criminals and Gang Members Anonymous. CGA has adopted Centering Prayer to assist in implementing the 11th step. Centering Prayer is a simple form of meditation popularized by a Trappist monk named Thomas Keating, who was invited by CGA to speak to their group. And I know that uh, in my knowledge of 12-step recovery and the evolution of it all, no one has ever defined a prayer and meditation practice to go along with the 11th step. And I think it's time that it be done now. And so with CGA, we wish to adopt Father Keating's practice of prayer and meditation because it continues along the Christian tradition. But what's special about it is it excludes no one of other faiths or anyone with lack of faith. It's open to all and excludes no one. And so at this time, I wanted Father Keating to know that for all CGA group from now and forever, as far as I'm concerned, as the founder of CGA and him being the founder of Center and Prayer, that hopefully that all can learn from the practice of Center and Prayer and that our experiences here we can today flourish and continue to set a tone for all criminals and gang members to follow after this day. Well, welcome to this uh, sacred circle in which uh, each of us is invited to access the silent place within us where the divine presence is, awaits us. So I invite you now slowly to close your eyes, letting go of the immediate environment we're in. If thoughts come, as they usually do, don't resist them, don't retain them, don't react emotionally to them. And if you notice you're thinking about them, return ever so gently to the sacred word you've chosen as the symbol or gesture of your intention to be with God during this time and to consent to his presence and action. And so let us Pray in this way for these 10 minutes. Is there a right or a wrong way to pray? To my understanding, I believe there's no wrong way. There's only a right way to pray because your prayer is based upon your relationship and understanding of your God or your higher power. A lot of people feel that to kneel and to bow your head and, and things like this or practice when they pray to their God. But I catch myself, I could be walking the track. I could be upset and I'll, I'll question him. But then I've always turned out to ask it, well, please don't let this happen to me again. But I consider that part of being my prayer, whether I'm upset at times or, or I'm not upset because that's my personal relationship with God. That's who I understand him to be, that he doesn't judge me, no matter what type of attitude or problems that I'm having. So I only believe there's a right way to pray. That's your, your own individual relationship with God. So how you, how you pray is not as important as the reason why you pray. So it's the motive. So just the desire to pray is always a success, no matter how uh, uh, difficult or how uh, much of a failure we, we experience it. The noise bothers me while I meditate. How can I de decrease this distraction? The first principle is, is not to resist the noise, because as soon as you resist it, you start thinking about it more. So, so just to accept it and let it be, to move on sounds like a, a good solution. Is it all right to fall asleep when I meditate? Fortunately, God loves us as much when we're asleep as when we're awake. <laughs> So, so maybe the best response would be to thank God you got a little extra snooze, and if there's time <laughs> when you wake up, then you could, uh, you, then you could just start over. So, but it's important not to take our faults or failures uh, seriously. That we're like, uh, you know, this is a real apprenticeship, so we're bound to make many mistakes. And these don't matter to God, I don't think, as long as you're working at it. Can I meditate even though I haven't done all the steps? My response is yes, but are you fully gonna benefit from meditating by not doing the steps? Personally, I'm a former gang member and I have a lot of haunting thoughts in my mind. 
And uh, before I could benefit fully from meditation, I had to remove all these thoughts. By doing the 12 steps thoroughly, I have removed them. And now I can benefit fully from meditation. I'm able to keep the calmness and peace that I find from meditation. Do you have to use a sacred word? The sacred word for me, it gives me a way of returning to my intention to be in that quiet place. When a thought comes, I, I use some of Father Keating's words that I'll never forget. He said, it's like sitting on the edge of a river and the boat's going by. And I can lock onto the boats going by just like a bad thought or a negative action that happened throughout the course of the day. But I can also return to just sitting there and enjoying the water going by rather than staying focused on that boat. And that word helps me return to my intention to just sit there quietly before God in that peaceful space. And when I pray and meditate, it's not just one boat. There's sometimes a whole lot of boats. And uh, so sometimes it takes me a few minutes to get to that peaceful space. In other words, the word has no importance of itself, though people often choose a, a name of God or something, but one can use some other word like calm or listen or peace or love or something else. But, but some people uh, feel more comfortable uh, in, in, in just following their breath as the symbol of, uh, of uh, breath really means spirit, of receiving the Holy Spirit into their inmost being. And when they exhale of, of breathing out that the love of the spirit into uh, all, uh, all of humanity or into the atmosphere of wherever we're living. So if for some reason, after a reasonable try, the sacred word doesn't seem to work for you, you might think of just following the breath, which is not following it physiologically, but simply noticing that you're breathing when you have a, a distraction or a thought that you don't want. I struggle with too many trash thoughts when I try to meditate, so why try? You, you know, we really can't uh, control the nature of our thoughts. All you can do is put up with them. So we, we suggest, uh, it is a general recommendation, that you, you accept even the wildest thoughts that go through your mind without any, without any question. Because as soon as you start thinking how bad these are, this is another thought and it's worse than the first one because it has an emotional charge to it that up, upsets or takes you away from silence even more. Mm -hmm. So it's, the thoughts can't do you any harm unless you think about them or want them. And so by disregarding them, Move, uh, letting them go is about all we can do, and gradually the habit forms of, of letting go of them more and more promptly, and then, uh, and then a deeper peace occurs, and, uh, and eventually you get to ignore most of them, not all of them, some of them get to you, but uh, you get better at it, so it's, it's important to give it a good try, that is to say, like if you are thinking of doing it and having haven't done it as on an everyday basis, think of giving it a 90-day a, a trial. No money-back guarantee, however. <laughs> Just do it. The guarantee will, the reward would be in, in experiencing what it's like to really have that discipline. What am I supposed to think about when I meditate? The discipline in centering prayer is precisely not thinking but it really means not thinking of anything particular. So that in, in, when you're not thinking of anything particular and have the intention of being there with God and loving God, then there gradually develops a general loving attentiveness that has no thought content, which is just a presence or a sense of God's presence or a peace, as you said so well, or of everything is okay or of being forgiven, or that God is close. Or the, so, so what God is really doing in the Centering Prayer practice is affirming our basic goodness. And, and as that uh, conviction develops in us and heals our self-doubts and our guilt feelings or shame, humiliation, or, or the sense of having uh, failed God or even betrayed God, whatever it is, all these thoughts are for the birds. They don't please God at all, and they just get us upset. So, so the idea is just to, to endure the thoughts that are going by without thinking about any thought. 
So you don't have to be afraid of thoughts because beyond them is always uh, the silence of God. And so even if you're bombarded with the thoughts, even between the various words, there's a certain moment or a split second of silence and God is right there, always sort of peeking through between the sounds of the words. So it's good to take a friendly attitude towards the thoughts because you're sure going to have them. And, and just to say hello and goodbye. Uh, let them come, let them go. And when they get a little aggravating or attractive or cause an aversion, ever so gently return to the sacred word or the sacred breath. So it's really an exercise of, of the love of God and the less self-motivation, the better it goes. In other words, so to, to look for peace or to look for a spiritual experience is to misunderstand what love is, which is simply giving ourselves away to God again and again. Centering Prayer Guidelines 1. Choose a sacred word as the symbol of your intention to consent to God's presence and action within. 2. Sitting comfortably and with eyes closed, settle briefly and silently introduce the sacred word as the symbol of your intention to consent to God's presence and action within. 3. When you become aware of thoughts, return ever so gently to the sacred word. 4. At the end of your prayer period, remain in silence with eyes closed for a few minutes. <laughs>